These people are willing to sacrifice their business's capabilities to step up for the greater good. And the fact that these stories are not front page everywhere at a time when the American public is panicked and you could offer them a sliver of hope is to me not only dishonest, it is journalistic malpractice. <laughs> When it comes to the handling of the, the Chinese virus, have you heard the media celebrate any of the innovations made by the private sector? You're talking about uh, retooling your factories for masks, for testing, for treatment, for therapeutics. Yeah. I think that it's journalistic malpractice that mm -hmm. these aren't being shouted from the rooftops right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, why don't, shouldn't we want to give people hope? It seems that they want to give people false hope in this idea of Medicare for All or a socialized healthcare system because, of course, this is what we need to talk about. The claim that we're seeing from the left on the coronavirus pandemic is that we wouldn't have these problems if we had universal health care. The public mm. sector could make all of this go away. Here's them saying it because you don't have to take my word for it. We will talk, I am sure, about Medicare for All. Sure. But when I talk about health care being a human right and all people having health care, the coronavirus crisis makes that abundantly clear as to why it should be. Wrong. Is the coronavirus the best case for Medicare for Let's all? Let's reverse that shot. Coronavirus is a very good case for oh, Medicare ah! for all. But it's like it's looking in through the lens of an aquarium. It's a case for Medicare for all all the time. If we had Medicare for ah! all, yeah, not much better. Ah! we would have been far better prepared to How? handle the crisis. There is no middle ground when it comes to dealing with a national security threat. And Medicare for like all is an example of a policy that would take on that threat with the seriousness no, that it requires to be sure. taken on. What would Medicare for All do? It would ensure that people actually could get a test for coronavirus, that they could get treatment for the coronavirus. Hmm. Come, come again, retard. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Here's the thing. I don't think we could have a more crystal clear oh, case that the exact opposite is yeah. true. COVID-19, the Chinese virus, Wu flu, whatever you want to call it, there has never been more of a crystallization as to the need for private industry due to the sheer ineptitude of the government. They talk about, they want to compare us to other countries. Let, let, this is something that actually I stumbled across. Let's okay. take the countries at the top of the World Health Organization, uh, their rankings, right? They rank right. us 36 yeah. right next to Slovenia. Now, with, let, let's take them with a comparable population size to the United States. Let's look at their total deaths and deaths per capita. Italy's number two and Spain oh. is number seven. Whoops. We barely edged out Slovenia. Uh. Here's the <laughs> truth. So close. Government mucked this up. Private industry is fixing it. And they're being held responsible with fixing it. So there are a few examples that we can walk through as to yeah. why you shouldn't entrust all of your health, uh, all of your health and health care needs to the government. Uh, let's go back to the, the Obama administration, right? They never replenished the stockpile of masks after the Ebola scare. Now, I know, I know before people get, people are going to get upset. You're going to blame Donald Trump for uh, not accepting masks from China. Here's the thing. The truth is a lot of these masks and test kits from China, they've had mm. to be recalled yeah, by the countries yeah. that use them. They're so, pre-infected, so pre they, yeah. they didn't know. They came pre-infected. Yeah, it was the pre-infected version. You don't want that They version. thought it was like a cigar roller where yeah. they test one cigar in every box. Dip. Mm. Like, box well, of 25! You gotta do more. <laughs> It's not green. <laughs> it's not a pregnancy test. Yeah. Oh, my bad. It's kind of like those smallpox blankets. Same kind of thing. I already pay shipping. So first, when he talks about <laughs> if, the if we had socialized healthcare, everyone would be able to be tested, right? Yeah. That's what that guy just, yeah. just, just uh, said. No. So no, let's be clear help. that it couldn't be more dishonest. That is, it's, if today were opposite day, like if we were going into scouts where they have opposite right. day and everyone wears their clothes on backwards because it's fun and we like to have a laugh, he would be tops. <laughs> yeah. But... Here's another truth for you. At first, the CDC was the only place approved by the FDA to make the testing kits. Oh. Right? The CDC refused testing kits and capabilities from the private sector, and we oh. all know how that turned out. Only oh. once the private sector industry was allowed to step up, and this keep in mind too, they were already stepping up, but they weren't allowed to, did we see the improvement. Since yeah. then, what do we have? We have United States companies that have developed the fasting test, uh, fasting testing kits, fastest testing kits in the world. Abbott Laboratories, I have that name right, yeah. yeah. Private US company, they invented a COVID test. Five minutes. Boom. You get results. That's huge. Only He's, earlier wait. this week. And then they were topped by another company, BodySphere, developed a two-minute test that was approved wow. today. Two is the magic number. Two-minute COVID testing. Mm. 
Stick that in your pipe and kill yourself with it, CDC. And here's another, here's another problem, not learning from the mistakes. The FDA, they're still preventing private companies from creating as many tests as possible. They're only approving 100,000 a day when these companies could be upping it to 160,000 a day. The, oh government, the government is not here to help. I just want to make that yeah. very clear. By the way, hit the notification bell. If you're subscribed, hit all notifications so you're notified when every video goes up. It goes up at 9 p.m. Eastern, of course. Mug Club Quarantine all month, $30 off, oh, promo month. code QUARANTINE, and we are doing morning shows live, talking with you at 10 a.m. By the way, here's something else, just to show you how smug the media is. Remember, they, they mocked Donald Trump mercilessly. when He, he made this suggestion, uh, just either, I think it might have been earlier this week, mm -hmm. at the most, last week. They're throwing away the mask right away. They're throwing away. And when you hear 55 million masks were ordered, I'm saying 55 million. How could it possibly be such a number? And they say, oh, that's just a small fraction of what we need. And I said, why aren't we sanitizing masks? You know, you look at the masks. I've looked at all the different masks. Some don't lead themselves to, to doing that, I think, but many do. And I said, why aren't we? We have very good uh, liquids for doing this, sanitizing the masks. And that's something they're... They're starting to do more and more. They're sanitizing the masks. Okay, a couple of things here. F first off, this was assumed to be crazy with leftist outlets claiming that he was irresponsible. <laughs> Why? Citing federal yeah. guidelines, because the federal guidelines would, of course, be correct. Here's the thing. Right. You also need to separate what Donald Trump says from the soundbite that you see on Twitter. When you hear that oh, of course, yeah. in its totality, like, oh, okay, that makes sense. He says he even hedges his words. Some masks maybe, some masks yeah. not. But you have to understand the difference between what Donald Trump says sometimes and what he means. Yeah. Well, we we, uh, we had some very fine liquids. And so the media says, he just thinks you can spray some Everclear on it and call it a day. Yeah. No, what he was talking about was some kind of a system yeah. to make masks reusable. Recycling. You should be fans of that, right? <laughs> no, not when Donald yes. Trump says it, Jake You'd Tapper. Think, yeah. Well, careful. Block your mouth. Don't let this tin can. I'm about to kick hit you in the teeth, you piece of shit. Because Patel, a nonprofit, started using this mask sanitization technology. Oh. They now have machines that can sanitize 80,000 masks a day oh, in Ohio, wow. are shipping machines to other states. They'll hopefully result in 400,000 masks That's being huge. cleaned per day. So That's I get amazing, it. Him yeah. saying we have some very fine liquids, okay? Very fine <laughs> liquids. <laughs> the, the best. Absinthe. Maybe <laughs> a port. Whatever it is that you want to assume he's saying, it's not that crazy. Every single journalist should be talking about how now they can sanitize tens or hundreds of thousands of masks per day. We are going to have hundreds yeah. of thousands new masks made because of private industry who stepped up, who, by the way, didn't even have to be forced to by the Defense Production Act, and the FDA did approve the drug that Donald Trump was touting mm. last week that you oh. said was irresponsible because there was no kind of medical basis. You're wrong, you're wrong, and you should be happy that you're wrong because it's going to save, I mean, let's be honest, dozens of lives with this pandemic mm. here going on. <laughs> Here's another claim that they've made quite a bit. Uh, that other countries with the socialized healthcare systems, that they've somehow done better than us. So they let, let them. Mm -hmm. But the federal government, the Trump administration, botching the rollout of testing for this virus, it continues to set the United States apart. FT, the Financial Times in London today, put out this graph showing how, how well various countries are doing in terms of testing for the virus. When you look at the best, you know, the best healthcare system Burt in the Ward. world, that's something that's <laughs> up for debate. South Korea, we're up to South Korea has up to ten thousand tests per day. They've been able to provide tests to any single person that wants it, and here people are scrambling. Okay, all right. So let's get back to South <laughs> Korea. Let's go back to Burt Ward's comments there, Burt Maddow, no. uh, a country that they're talking about who they've, they've praised for years, of course, yeah. based on the World Health Organization's ranking, which, by the way, I love now that no one can ever use that again. The mm -hmm. Young Turks <laughs> Network, the leftist organizations, you can't say, well, we rank behind what, France, Italy, yeah. Spain. Uh, Do we really want to talk about that anymore? Yeah. We always knew that was yeah. the case because of subjective polling, but now you know it's the case because the entire world has seen it once Italy said, you know what, you're over 60, you're on your own. And that's not yeah. so old. They retire at like 35 in Italy. They don't create anything that benefits <laughs> the rest of the world. Pasta was Chinese. Piss off. Really? So, <laughs> didn't know that. Let's look at Italy with its nationalized healthcare system, right? They had by far the highest death rates. And its population, quite elderly, of course, the intensive care yeah. units, they were just advised, just, they said, what do we do with these elderly people? And I said, well, I don't, just don't, just don't do anything. But what do we do? Well, how do, we, how do we help them? We just don't help them because we don't, we can't, I mean, we can't raise taxes anymore and people don't work. 
Yeah. But you said we, we call the government. Yeah. And the wait times, They're of course, we've talked about this before. The wait times are terrible. We've talked about this with all these countries. You can go yeah. back and watch your socialized healthcare videos. And Horrible. if you have a broken arm or something, to them, it's a nuisance because it's not yeah. essential. It's like a nosebleed. But now when it comes to a pandemic, there can be no debate. There's no denying that the wait times increase the mortality rates. Yep. That it's And at the very least, it's a violation of human rights to not allow people to purchase privatized healthcare, yeah. which is yeah. increasingly rare in these countries. But that was the case in Canada, at least until 2005. Let's go to South Korea, by the way. This is one that really bothers me as yeah. people point to South Korea. Sure, they they were ahead of us on testing, absolutely, because they quickly mobilized, and what do they do? They use the private sector for testing kits, which the CDC here said, no, 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 you can't do. Now that right. we're doing it, we're surpassing South Korea very quickly. Oh, yeah. Also, something that when people point to South Korea as a successful example of the social distancing protocols, they effectively doxed their own citizens. Yeah. yeah. South Korea, they were tracking the phones of citizens and then released detailed information to the public via apps, including age descriptions and movements over the past few days so that people could say, oh, 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 okay, I see. Man have a sneeze, go to park. We kill him. Oh, yes. <laughs> so if we want to point, this is something really important because when they, in trying to demonize the United States yeah. because of the communist sympathizing media, and I mean that because they were actually parroting communist Chinese government talking points. I say that without a hint of hyperbole. Yeah. Hyperbole, hyperbole. Hi. Hyperbole is hyperbole and I throw a pipe at the camera. There you go. It's like a 3D <laughs> show on TGIF. Oh, oh. Without a hint of hyperbole, this media who is sympathetic to the Chinese government, they will take any opportunity to demonize the American government at all costs. Well, when you yeah, tell absolutely. them we should we should be like South Korea, let the American public know what they did. Yeah. Americans, you think they have a they have a, a greater success rate here in dealing with corona? Okay, if you just want to use one metric, but are you willing to turn over yeah. all of your phones yeah. data? Yeah. Are you willing to turn over all of your location services? Not to mention your private web searching on your iPhone. You want to turn that over to the government <laughs> so they can release it to the public? Because yeah, yeah. that's what out. South Korea did. I know. You could kill everybody who has this virus as well and have zero new cases. That's right? absolutely right. You could do that and just report, hey, yeah, we're doing fantastic. Works. We killed every. It's kind of like Russia, yeah. right? We don't hear anything out of Russia. I guarantee you they have some. They're like, ah, oh, we'll just kill them. That's Sorry. what Pelosi we'll did with her more. cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> You don't see them anymore. No. Have you seen her assistant bring her a coffee? No. No, 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 no. Not in a while. She needs their souls to sustain herself. So another truth. <laughs> um, we weren't as far along as other countries. That's true. Once we started testing, and we started testing more people uh, in eight days, I think, eventually, than uh, South Korea tested in eight weeks yeah. once we started testing. And now, of course, we have more privatized industry, as we talked about, stepping up so we can test more people. Again, bottleneck, and CDC, quickly. socialized government. That's what we're talking about here, right? Socialized health care run by the government versus private industry coming out with a five-minute test and a two-minute test. I bet you the next one, you, it'll just, you just start to say the word test into and the test done. like you're positive. Yeah. Just test. Oh. <laughs> It could tell by it my says viral every time. load. That's a terrible test. <sighs> More than any other country in the world right now, as far yeah. as that. So that talking point is gone as well. Yeah. Here's another point that they they'll, uh, still use that, they'll make. Another area where the United States actually, by the way, is doing really well uh, because of the private sector. Independent researchers, they found success with combination therapy. We don't have a cure, but we do have what they call therapeutics. We do have yeah. treatment. Donald Trump went up and talked about chloroquine. Uh, chloroquine, 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 I don't, I don't care. Fish tank chloroquine cleaner. and Everybody antibiotics. Knows. Fish tank cleaner. Just go home. <laughs> That's how it's pronounced. Just take a shot and tell us how it works out. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> he was no, mocked. Bill, Bill said he was mocked better. across the media. Right, this is irresponsible. Yeah. Well, now it's FDA approved oh. in emergency uses. It was already an FDA well, approved drug because of its safety profile, but now it's FDA approved specifically for coronavirus. Hmm. But before that, a private practitioner had prescribed it off label. Had 699 people who were treated successfully. Not to mention all of the wow, independent wow. testing, which we talked about on this channel. And this is really concerning. Twitter and YouTube were removing or censoring videos yeah. that talked about chloroquine as fake news or talked about Chinese masks being faulty. They removed some of these tweets and videos. How it's scary insane. is that? When these people are in charge of, uh, of fact-checking, and not only are they dishonest, but they are dishonest in, the way, in a way that could save thousands of lives. When we're talking about a vaccine, yes, researchers are working on a vaccine, yeah. and it'll probably take about a year and a half. Why? Mostly because of the FDA baggage, just for the same reason Red. as chloroquine. Red right? Tape. It's really hard to move a barge. It's sometimes more helpful when you have Donald Trump coming in with chloroquine and another barge going, get over there! <laughs> get out of my way. It does help. It's terrible. This show's more of a tugboat. It's easier to move. 
So here's something. <laughs> while we're talking about, we do have to uh, get going with uh, Razor Fist, and then we'll see you tomorrow yeah. for Good Morning yeah. Mug Club. But this is something that just bothers me so much. I don't think it could possibly be more clear at this point that we need the private sector. Oh, yeah, the only absolutely. other country that's had success beyond doxing its citizens when you look at South Korea is because they did mobilize the private sector. Once we started doing that here in the United States, guess what? We start doing better. And guess what else? Donald Trump starts speaking directly to his audience with these evening press briefings. Yeah. Yeah. His approval rating goes up. So what do they do? Let's stop airing Trump. Let's run a story about people who drank fish tank cleaner to condemn Trump for touting a drug. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's been approved by the FDA and it actually shows some oh, of the <laughs> Let's not cover it. Let's At blame all. Donald Trump for saying that we should be able to sanitize mess. Oh, wait a second. We actually can do that now because private industry stepped up to do it. It's almost like Donald Trump said this kind of knowing what was coming around the corner. Let's just silence this. This is an amazing situation for me because after 9-11, and I know that a lot of people didn't like George Bush, at the very yeah. least we came together for the common yeah. good. And right now we're fighting this sort of invisible enemy. I know some people are saying it's not technically invisible if you have a microscope. I don't care. The point here is that I don't know if there will ever be a time now where we'll come together again against an enemy. If something could ever help us find common ground, yeah. it would be this right here. And I don't just mean fighting a virus, but I mean the idea that we are making unbelievable headway, and we are making headway not from tearing people away from their jobs and place of business and having them holed up in their apartments, though some people need to continue doing that, obviously, but we are making headway because of American businesses innovating and stepping forward to save fellow Americans' lives. I know it's a bad narrative because we want to think that capitalism is greedy and bad, but guess what? These people are willing to sacrifice their business's capabilities to step up for the greater good, and the fact that these stories are not front page everywhere at a time when the American public is panicked, and you could offer them a sliver of hope, is to me not only dishonest, it is journalistic malpractice. I don't even know if that's a real thing because you're not really held to any kind of a standard like a lawyer or a doctor, <laughs> but if you could be, we hang you up at dawn before breakfast, figuratively speaking, of course, not literally. <laughs> not, I just want real. you fired and on the unemployment line with everyone else who you've harmed. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, click this box because you'll enjoy uh, Gerald's show that he hosts. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just subscribe and hit the notification bell. Uh, hit all notifications. Oh, look, there are videos playing in boxes, too, up here. Click one of these videos if you enjoy them. So subscribe, notification bell. Think about joining Mug Club at letoutcutter.com slash mug club. And Gerald A., <laughs> that's all you need to know.